What's up everyone, Subterranean here, and today we're going to learn how to make 808 hits similar to what you'd find in trap songs made by producers like Metro Boomin that sound like this. Now some people may be wondering why I'm making a sound design tutorial on a sound that some would consider to be very basic. Well the reason why is because I've noticed that a lot of trap producers use sampled 808s instead of making their own, and there's nothing wrong with using sampled 808s or sampled drums in general, but I personally prefer making my own because you have way more control over the sound of them. You can really make a unique sounding 808 that will stand out from other people's and you can get it to fit into your own songs a lot better and sound more natural because you actually made these sounds. They're not just taken from somebody's pack. So let's start off by opening up a fresh instance of Native Instruments Massive. And I would like to clarify that you can make this sound in basically any plugin out there as long as you can make a sine wave in it. Even the preloaded VSTs that come with DAWs like Ableton's Operator and FL Studio's 3X Oscillator. The reason why I'm using Massive instead of one of those plugins is because regardless of DAW, most producers have a copy of Massive. So this would translate over to more producers than if I were to do it in a plugin that other people may not have because they're using a different DAW. And before we start making this sound, I would like to mention that in the description box below, We'll have a link where you can download the full Ableton project file along with a massive preset. And if you enjoy this style of music, be sure to check out our Hip Hop in Motion course with David Heartbreak, which is coming soon. So, we're in Native Instruments Massive, and we've got the preloaded initialized sound. Which isn't anything special, it's just the square signed wavetable. When you're making 808 bass hits, you should either take your oscillator and set the pitch to be at a very low octave, or you should just be playing in a low octave to begin with, usually somewhere between 0 and 1. The note I'm playing right now is G0. Let's change this wavetable from a square saw to a sine square. And let's take the wavetable position knob and fling it all the way over to the left. So now we've got that pure bassy sine wave sound. And we're actually pretty close to being done with this sound already because that's the only oscillator we're going to use. Some people might try to throw in another oscillator, like a sine wave that's at a higher octave. They might try to mix in a triangle wave. And they might even try to use a triangle wave for their first oscillator instead of a sine wave, or maybe a mix between the two. But I prefer using just a single sine wave because I've noticed that it gives off the most pure bassy sound with nothing muddling it up. And we are going to add on some extra harmonics later, but we're not going to be doing that with another oscillator. We're going to be doing that in a different way. So now that we've got our core sound, let's go to the fourth envelope. In Massive, this is the envelope that controls the volume, and we're going to make a few tweaks here. First, I'm going to take the attack and I'm going to put it just a little bit closer to the right. Maybe somewhere around here. The main reason why I'm doing this is so the 808 has its own space against the kick. If we have the kick and the 808 triggering at the exact same time, it might sound a little bit muddy. So we're going to have a little bit of attack just so they both have their own space to sort of breathe in the mix. You can hear that's already sounding pretty nice with me just playing some random notes. Now let's take the level and turn it all the way down because we want a sound that decays over time instead of playing at one consistent volume. Now the sound dies out rather quickly. I think it should go on for quite a bit more. So let's take the decay knob and place it up. Now depending on what type of track you're creating, you might want to put the decay knob somewhere differently. If you're making a song that doesn't have a lot of bass hits, maybe just one every couple of bars to add some spice, then you might want a very long decay time somewhere around here. 
but if you're doing the opposite, making a track with a lot of very short bass hits, then you might want to have a very short decay time, maybe even less decay than what it was initially at. It all depends on what track you're making and what speed the track is at. I think we're going to go for something kind of in the middle. Maybe around here, just after the Y in DK. I think that sounds pretty good. I'm also going to leave the release right here, because I've noticed if we take the release off, then sometimes the sound clicks a little bit. Specifically when we let go of a note. So let's just put that release up a little bit. And we can hear that we no longer have the clicking sound at the end. Now, the only problem with the release knob is we might have some notes that play over top of each other a little bit, and they clash. So to fix that, let's go over to our voicing tab. We'll set it to be at monophonic. And now we won't have any overlapping notes. And for bass, you generally don't want to have any chords or any multiple notes layered. You just want one singular note playing at a time. Now I'm going to go down to trigger mode and I'm going to set it to be legato. And the reason why is because of a technique that some people like to do with their 808s. Some people like to incorporate what is known as an 808 slide, where the sound will go up or down in pitch. And we can do that by setting the trigger mode to legato, and then going over to the oscillator tab and increasing the glide time. So now if we play two notes and they overlap, the pitch glides. But if we play singular notes that do not overlap, we don't have the gliding effect. Now, let's go over to another envelope. We'll do the third envelope, but it doesn't matter as long as we're not using the fourth one because that's what controls the volume of the sound. And we're going to use this third envelope to modulate the pitch of our first oscillator with the sine wave. So let's just take this envelope, drag it on here, and I'm gonna set this to be at 24. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a small pitch modulation where it starts at a higher pitch and then it quickly goes down. This is going to create a little bit more of a sort of kicking, attacking sound with the 808 that works really well. Let's take the attack and put it all the way to the left. We'll take the level and put it all the way down. That's the second level knob. And let's tweak with that decay. That's way too severe, so let's bring it more over to the left. I like it right about here. It has a nice sort of punch to it. Now there's one more thing that I would like to tweak with a little bit on the volume envelope, the fourth one. One thing that I've heard some people mention when they say that they prefer using sampled 808s over ones that they create is they like the way that 808s will actually decay in time faster if you're playing them at a higher pitch. This is because of the way that samplers work. When you're not time stretching a sound, it will play at a faster speed that will affect both the pitch and the tempo, meaning that the sound will die out faster if it's playing at a higher pitch, and it will decay in volume slower if you're playing it at a lower pitch. What you can do is go over to the macro control panel, take this little KTR button right here, which stands for key tracking, and then drag that onto the decay knob. Now let's take this little K right here and drag it backwards. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this 808 at a very high octave to see if I can get the decay time at a place where I like it. I want it to decay very fast if we're playing it at a high octave that we normally wouldn't use. And right here after the D in decay seems to be a pretty good spot. But now, our lower 808 decays a little bit too fast, so let's actually take the decay knob and spring it up right here, more close to the right. I like it there. It's pretty close to where we initially had it. And now if we play the 808 at a higher octave, you can notice that it's decaying faster, but not super fast. So that's how you emulate that sampled 808 effect in Massive. Now our sound is almost done, 
there's only one more thing we're gonna do to this 808. And this is how we're gonna add some more harmonics to the sound to make it stand out in the mix a little bit more. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our first effect tab, FX1, and I'm gonna throw on a classic tube distortion effect. Let's set the dry wet to be all the way at the right so the distortion is affecting the sound 100% and we don't have any more clean signal. And I'm gonna take the drive and I'm going to slowly push it up as I play the sound. I like the way it sounds here. But one thing that I'm not quite caring for, at least in the context of this track, is how while it did add some more harmonics to the bass, it's adding a few too many high harmonics for my taste. I have heard trap songs that use very distorted bass sounds like these, and it can work very well. But for this track, I would like something that's still a little bit more subtle, not quite as in your face and hardcore-esque. So what we're gonna do for our first and only external effect is we're gonna throw on an EQ8, and I'm gonna change one of these EQ bands, doesn't matter which, to be a low cut times four, and I'm gonna cut out the high frequencies. Let's play our 808 and then slowly cut off high frequencies until we have it at a place we like. I like it right about here, at maybe around 144 to 150 hertz. And now that we have that EQ on, Let's hear what the 808 sounds like with and without the distortion effect. You can hear that even when we're cutting out the high frequencies, it makes a very big difference. And now that we've made our 808, I'm going to write out a quick pattern that follows the kick. So, after a few minutes, I made a basic 808 pattern that follows the kick and roughly follows the melody of the track. I turned down the level to about minus 11.3, but I would advise to not overpower the bass too much by cranking it up to an insane level and making the rest of the track muddy. Remember that in the mastering process, you could actually increase the amount of bass with an EQ, so don't make it too diminished, but try not to go too crazy with the bass levels either. One thing that I noticed when I was making this pattern is that we don't have quite enough glide. I threw in some sort of glide notes right here where we have overlapping notes that change in pitch, and they're kind of hard to notice. So let's actually increase that a bit more. Put it maybe up to the M in time. And let's see how that sounds. Maybe actually a little bit more because we don't have many that go up very far in pitch. I think that sounds pretty good there. And one final tip I would like to give to people who are making trap styled songs with very big sounding bassy 808 hits like these is whenever you have a kick drum playing over top the 808 cut off some of the very low frequencies, around 40 to 50 hertz, because those frequencies are usually where the 808 is hitting at. And if you have the kick and the 808 playing at a lot of the same frequencies, then it'll become kind of muddy because we have two things that are occupying the same space. You can see that with an EQ8, I use the low cut times four and I have it set to 40 hertz. I wouldn't cut off any more than about 50 hertz in your kicks though as then you'll start to lose some of that punch. But there we go. That was my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like this video and leave a comment as it really helps us out. And please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.